All right, welcome everyone. It's Friday, March 6th. We're here at Denver Open Media. This is Open Music Sessions. Welcome to the show. How's everyone feeling out there tonight? Yeah, give it up. All right, great, great. Got another great program planned for you tonight. We have a nonprofit spotlight interview with Phenomenal Women Incorporated. We have the comedic workings of Laura Condi. And we have two bands tonight. We have singer-songwriter Bethel Steele out of Fort Collins. And we also have FY5 coming out of Fort Collins. Let's give it up for our talent tonight. All right. I want to take this moment to uh, thank everyone who's tuned in online. Thank you if you're streaming, watching live, or if you're listening over the radio on 92.9 FM or 89.3 HD3. We, like I said, have a great program for you all tonight. Really glad you could join us. Uh, without any further ado, let's get the show started. We got Laura Condi coming up. I hope you guys are ready to laugh. Let's go. All right. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me. First and foremost, I'd like to announce that I drove here in a Prius. I'm 35 years old. I'm originally from California, and I drive a 2010 Prius. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Prius is a hybrid vehicle, meaning it runs off of part battery and part avocados. Um, and when I first moved here, I really wanted to fit in, so I got one of those stickers for my car that says, the mountains are calling and I must go. And then I realized it looked really stupid on a Prius. Uh, so I crossed out mountains and I just wrote Target over it. <laughs> so it says, Target is calling and I must go. Um, and the other problematic thing about the Prius is it's got like that push button start and the remote entry and it's super quiet. And I ran into a problem when I parked my car at work uh, and then proceeded to put in my earbuds and then uh, exit my vehicle but forget to turn off my engine. I then worked an entire eight hour work day and came back to my car still unlocked and running. And I've done this twice. And I don't know what's more miraculous, the fact that I've left my Prius unlocked and running and it worked perfectly fine after that, or the fact that I've left my Prius unlocked and running in a crime-infested RTD parking lot and nobody has stolen my car. Like, that's how badly nobody wants to be seen in a Prius. Like, a car thief could see my running car completely unlocked, but see, like, the Prius logo and a Target sticker, and probably hear all, like, the Fallout Boy songs still blasting from my stereo, and just be like, no thanks, I'll pass. Um, I'm on a dating app, and uh, at first I was a little embarrassed to tell the guys on the dating app that I drove a Prius until I got matched with a guy who lived out of his van. Um, and then after that, I got matched with a guy who asked me out and I said, okay, but do you have a home or an apartment? Cause I just got matched with a guy who lives in his car and I'd kind of like to avoid that. And he said, oh man, no, full disclosure, I don't even have a car. <laughs> so a little less embarrassed about rolling up to a date in a Prius after that. Um, the dating app also asked me what my love language is. Do you guys know what love languages are? It's like how you show your affection, like words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service. I don't think any of these are by love language. I actually think my love language is like Amazon gift cards. <laughs> um, and a lot of the guys that I'm seeing on this dating app, there's photos of them drinking White Claw. That's also a problem. I actually don't like White Claw. I'm still on the Limerita bandwagon. I love a good Limerita. Uh, if it's not Limerita, I love Barefoot Chardonnay. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's the number one preferred drink of people with a guest bathroom with a seashell motif. Um, <laughs> I just love a drink that screams, this woman has Dr. Scholl's in her shoes. <laughs> um, did anyone leading up to the primaries, did you guys get a bunch of text messages from people working on those Democratic campaigns? Yeah. Did you guys get some texts? Yeah. yeah. Did anyone reply to them? Yeah. Yeah? Did anyone send them photos of their cat? Okay, I did, because I got a message that said, hey, Laura, this is Steph from Elizabeth Warren's campaign. Just wondering if you have a sec to talk about the Colorado primary. And I said, sure do, Steph, as long as we can agree that I have the cutest kitty in all of America. <laughs> and then I sent her a photo of my cat, Henry, because that's the sort of cat person I am. I send photos of my cats to strangers. But I am not the sort of cat person that was stoked to see the CGI musical Cats. 
I don't know if I, on behalf of all cat people, uh, I, we did not sign off on that. We do not endorse that message. Um, I post a lot of photos of my cat on Instagram, um, and I feel a little weird being on Instagram, uh, being 35. I feel like any day now I'm just going to open it up and there's going to be a message that says, you're 35 and using Instagram. Will you be using this account to post pictures of your children or promote your business as a life coach? Because I'm doing neither of those things. I'm using Instagram as like the beauty and the beast mirror I need it to be to spy on my ex-boyfriends. Like, hey, Laura, do you want to see a picture of your ex-boyfriend eating a burrito in the middle of the day? Like, are you crazy? Of course I do. Is the burrito prettier than me? All right, guys, that's my time. Thanks so much. All right, give it up for Laura Condi. Stick around for a second. We got a, we got a moment to chat. Don't, don't run away so fast. All right, so uh, Laura, uh, Little Bird told me you've uh, been in some local productions. Uh, maybe you can share a little bit about that with the audience. Uh, yeah, I do comedy and storytelling shows. So at the Bunport Theater, the narrators are We Still Like You, and then the Bunport Theater is doing the great debate coming up on the 17th. So if you're not out drinking and celebrating uh, St. Patrick's Day, come on down and see the great debate. All right, awesome. Support your local artists, support your local comedians. Give it up for Laura Condi. All right, thank you. Also, I love that your cat's name is Henry. I think that's a great name for a cat. Okay, moving right along. Uh, we're going to have some music a little bit later in the program, but right now we have our nonprofit spotlight interview with uh, Phenomenal Women Incorporated. We have founder and executive director Jocelyn Green. Will you please join me on stage? All right, thank you. Give it up for Jocelyn. How are you doing tonight? Very well, thank you. How are you? Awesome. Doing great. Um, so, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the mission and vision for Phenomenal Women um, and what your organization is doing here in the city? Yes. Step over here. <laughs> All right, good evening, everyone. Happy to be here. As mentioned, I'm Jocelyn Green, founder of Phenomenal Women, which is a nonprofit geared towards um, empowering the next generation of women leaders and also encouraging all women to reach their fullest potential. So we operate out of three components, one being women empowerment, where we bring an authentic uh, sisterhood of women together to create the spirit of volunteerism. So we support various business owners and entrepreneurs throughout the year um, by providing them with a safe space through our Invest in You Symposium and give them an opportunity to have a vendor space as well to promote their products and services. Aside from that, we do youth enrichment and then we also do community service um, which is the final component and um, we provided over a thousand care kits for the homeless community and we partner with Denver Rescue Mission as well as Sacred Heart House of Denver so we're really excited about where we're at and where we're going um, our next goal is to open up a facility for our students so that they can have after school programming as well as um, tutoring throughout the year for free that's amazing, thank you. Uh, and so I know that you've been running Phenomenal Women for about six years now, right? Um, but I understand that uh, you started that when you were down uh, in Alabama for college, is that right? Mm -hmm. Awesome, could you tell us a little bit more? So I actually went to college with the hopes of playing basketball. I just knew I was going to be the next Lisa Leslie. But um, after several devastating knee injuries, tearing my ACL, MCL, meniscus, oh, I had to give the sport up. And so I started to just regroup and um, think about things that I was also passionate about. And one of the biggest things was serving the community as well as um, helping the homeless community. So I started phenomenal women to also help the students on campus as well as the community to get academically acclimated and also encourage them and let them know if I can do it, you can do it too. So, you know, I'm someone who grew up with, with um, uh, without a father and what statistics call a broken home and didn't really have the necessary resources provided to me to be a successful student. So I wanted to be that liaison on campus to help those students and also provide, you know, a safe place to continue empowering them, not only um, during their freshman year, but until they graduate it. So. That's amazing. And uh, it's so amazing that you knew what you wanted to do at such a young age. I know when I was in college, I would, 
I was a college athlete as well, and so that's really all I could focus on. I had no idea what I was doing with myself. Um, well, so you've spoken about the youth program a little bit already, and that's phenomenal, and hence the name Phenomenal Women. Um, I understand that you have an open house coming up for this youth program, and that's like a 12-week program, right? Yeah. Cool. So maybe tell us a little bit more about the open house. So last year we started um, an Invest in You youth program, which is an, is an extension from our Invest in You um, symposium. And so it's a 12-week program where we have open enrollment for students, young ladies, ages 10 to 16. And really the mission is to cultivate um, their leadership skills and also provide them with mentorship throughout the year. And so during the 12-week program, we provide them with necessary skills that would benefit their future. So everything from self-defense, uh, entrepreneurship skills, public speaking, team building, um, everything that's, you know, we think is critical for um, a young lady to learn. And so once they successfully complete the 12-week program, they will then um, continue on to a graduation. They'll be awarded, have the opportunity to receive a scholarship. They'll be provided uh, with mentors and tutoring throughout the year. Um, and then aside from that, you know, we stay in contact with them and continue to, you know, encourage them and do like monthly outings with them as well. That's wonderful. It's, it's really, truly inspiring. Um, and so I know that there are a lot of uh, awesome young women in our age who are working with you on this program, uh, which I also love to see that you're getting your friends involved in. I work in the nonprofit sector and philanthropy as well, and we talk about something called like the four T's of philanthropy. Uh, one of those is time and donating your time and volunteering your time. Um, so maybe you can share with the folks, uh, anyone who has been inspired and interested in this, uh, how they maybe can get involved as a volunteer as well. So if you are interested in volunteering or, or just coming out, being a guest speaker, we're always looking for a workshop host to facilitate our workshops, come out and speak with our young ladies. And we're also always looking for volunteers to come out to our major events, which is like our youth talent show, our Invest in Youth Symposium and Mixers throughout the year. Um, so you can visit us at www.phenomenalwomenco.org and all social media platforms is Phenomenal Women CO. I have some business cards and information as well. I'll probably leave some out in the lobby so you feel free to pick some up or visit the website wonderful thank you Jocelyn uh, and so we'll have uh, a short video as well uh, for those in the studio to watch um, and those who are listening and watching online uh, and we'll just learn a little bit more about Jocelyn uh, and phenomenal women CEO and don't forget Google them search them on social media get involved link up uh, she's doing amazing things for young women and young girls in our city so uh, let's give her a round of applause all right, thank you so much for joining us. So my name is Jocelyn Green, founder of Phenomenal Women Incorporated. I am 27 years old, and I founded Phenomenal Women to be a beacon of light for um, students, really all women, to empower, encourage, and uplift them, to let them know it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. Um, Who else wants to share what they're grateful for? Go ahead. Yes, very good. That's important because not a lot of people have food and water. You'd be surprised. You heard the statistics in, you know, Colorado, this, um, our homeless community, that they're more fortunate and just what they don't have. So it's important for us to give back when we can, right? Um, you can prevail, and if I can do it, you can do it too. And the reason why I say that is because I'm someone who grew up in what statistics call a broken home. Um, meaning that you know I didn't know who my father was and I didn't have like all the resources available to me growing up to be a successful student. Mm -hmm. What about you, Genesis? Um, I was thankful for my family. Family? Mm -hmm. I was thankful for all my family. Okay. And so um, fast forward uh, in 2014 and when I was going to Miles College, which is in Birmingham, Alabama, a phenomenal woman was born and we started with an invest in youth symposium and also uh, really just doing community service and impacting the lives of others and i will go last so i'm thankful for the opportunity to give and serve others not everyone um, has the full autonomy to give back and serve in their community so right now we operate out of three components Everywhere from financial literacy to career uh, prof professionalism, um, career development, things of that nature. 
Uh, the second component being uh, women enrichment. And so we bring women together to create an authentic sisterhood through volunteerism. So today we're actually doing a gratitude giving party where um, we're putting together care kits for the homeless community. And then the final component is our homeless outreach. And so we partner with uh, Sacred Heart House Women and Children Shelter where we provide various items and also teach life skills. So in the past we've done uh, yoga with a purpose where we teach some stress management techniques. Um, the other component being uh, professional development as well because I think that's really important whether you're homeless or not. Um, so we really just strive to you know, reach various communities, not only in Denver, uh, but across Colorado. Um, so the end goal is really for us to open up our own facility where young girls can come out, they can you know, do uh, year-round life skills programs. They'll also have the opportunity to be mentored because right now our girls are mentored, but uh, we definitely need um, more women to be involved in order to carry out our mission of year-long mentorship and partnering with other organizations. And then after-school tutoring. Um, so those are just uh, things right now that we're starting to implement, but it would be great to have our own facility where we can continue to impact our young girls as well as other people who are in need. Uh, so all of our social media platforms, phenomenalwomenco.org, and our website is www.phenomenalwomenco.org. So I often reference how can the sky be the limit when there are footprints on the moon. So just know whatever your circumstances are, whatever you're going through, that you can do it. And Phenomenal Women is here to support you, um, regardless of whatever your endeavor is. We are here. And, you know, come out and support. We're always looking for volunteers uh, who want to just give back and help the community in various capacities, I would say Phenomenal Women is the organization to join. All right. One more round of applause for Jocelyn Green and Phenomenal Women Incorporated. All right. So we're rolling right along into uh, the next uh, portion of our program. It's our first musical performance. Uh, we have Bethel Steele. So she is an Americana-inspired singer-songwriter. Uh, she's born in upstate New York, but her music has toured from everywhere from Portland, Maine, all the way to Austin, Texas. Uh, and she has released a new EP titled Shadows and Light. And Beth is here to grace us with her voice and guitar this evening. So thank you very much for being here. It's all you. Awesome. Thank you, Daley. Um, it's a real pleasure to, to be able to kind of come in and take up um, take up some time in your day. I appreciate you all kind of coming out for this. Um, so yeah, I live up in Fort Collins now, grew up in upstate New York. And uh, at one point um, in the recent past, I was spending some time in Cumberland County, Maryland. Um, it's a county that is kind of between, it's like on the, the edge of Maryland and Pennsylvania. And I was sitting at this old uh, kind of retired farm and I was just sitting out on the porch and uh, the only thing that came to my mind were the lyrics to the song and later that afternoon I was sitting inside and was looking at the walls and the the fraying um, what's that stuff that's not paint <laughs> wallpaper thank you <laughs> you didn't know this was going to be a, a group group effort here did you um, Adam are you getting signal on my guitar Um, so yeah, it's uh, kind of a little vignette of, of this farm uh, in Cumberland County, Maryland. difficulties, but Adam is to the rescue, so um, I'll vamp a little bit. We're going to try another cable. <laughs> All right, let's see if we get some volume on this. There we go. All right, so this is a song called The Farm. Thank you, Adam. Over the bridge to the 
sound of the gravel road grassy fields and quaking leaves when you look that's what you see carries long and strong from the barn to the farmhouse where mama's cooking beets and greens and daddy's reading the daily news you can hear from here the sounds of the old porch swing there is history within these walls paperless and cracking at the scene and the floor creaks and moans beneath your feet your every move whispers of lives come and gone on this here farm daddy's reading rain by the cycles of the moon beneath the gray shade planted back a hundred years when the barn stalls were full and the gardens yield sustained well, the stalls are empty now but the gardens growing strong ever since that big flood came and that was back in 62 and 96 they planted peach trees by the gate and crack at the seams and the floor creaks and moans beneath your feet your every move whispers of the lives come and gone on this here farm and relics of time marked by and moans Yes, there is history within these walls On this here farm Thanks, friends. Um, so many, many years ago, I was sitting down with a mentor of mine. Uh, his name is Vance Gilbert. He's a songwriter from Western Massachusetts. And uh, I, I'm like, Vance, uh, can we like look at the tape from my last performance and just see, can, can you like, maybe like make some suggestions for me? Um, about like how to get better as a performer and really engage the audience, and so we started. I, we started watching tape, like you know, like you're doing playback for a sports team, <laughs> and uh, immediately I didn't even need him to open his mouth. I knew I'm just like, oh, my eyes are closed the whole time. <laughs> um, so I proceeded to to take that opportunity to to practice uh, at home in a mirror. I grabbed a full length mirror and brought it to the area that I usually practice in, and uh, from there I uh, can't do two things at once. <laughs> um, from there I, I was practicing and really trying to like engage myself in the mirror, right? Like, yeah, this is my audience. My audience is me right now. I can do this. And, uh, and then uh, this strange thing happened. Uh, I was kind of overcome by the person I saw in the mirror, and um, what I ended up doing was uh, I wrote a song, a kind of love song, to that person I saw in the mirror that 
yeah, like I know myself, but there's also like this underlying, um, this underlying person there that I, that I don't know that I know all that well. Um, and so I wrote this song called Beautiful Boy. Um, it's kind of all about this non-binary gender that, um, that I kind of sit in and that some of, I'm sure that probably all have friends that are kind of in that same place too. So anyways, this is a song called Beautiful Boy. Thanks, friends. Um, Y'all ever been on a bad date? <laughs> Great. That's all the intro that we need. <laughs> Candlelight, your date orders a glass of wine for you. I'll take a club soda of mine, please. You start talking about the weather, how it couldn't possibly get any better, and how the socks might just pull it off after all. Well, it's probably not a good sign that you've already crossed that unwritten line by talking about politics just to see what her reaction is. 
Well, maybe it's just a little while Just a single glass of wine And how long can one Longer than a little while. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Just remember to laugh, especially when the bartender is generously pouring her a full glass on her nearly empty glass when you were just asking, hey, hey, can I get the check, please? Remember to laugh. <laughs> uh. Maybe you should text your mother. Now's a good a time as any, don't you think so? Mm. Okay. Well, that doesn't work. You can just leave your five dollar bill at should more than cover your club soda and lime. <laughs> oh. Well, um, thanks y'all for hanging out tonight. Um, this has been a real real treat for me. Um, thanks for Denver Open Media for hosting this event, for opening up your doors to the community so that we can see kind of the work that you do here. Um, if you're unaware of what Denver Open Media does, please go out and talk with some of the folks to find out more of what they do for the community around here. It's pretty great. Um, this is a song called Shadows and Light that I'll leave you with. Um, I wrote this it was a prompt-based song. I do these fearless songwriting weeks where you get a prompt every day and you're supposed to write a song in an hour or less. I don't follow the rules of an hour or less because <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. Um, <laughs> uh, but the prompt for this particular day was uh, a drawing and all I could see on that day were the shadows. But in order to have shadows, you also need light. And uh, as I kind of sat with that for a while, this is the song that came out. So thank you all so much for listening. Um, it's been a great evening, and um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I've been waiting for the right time to let down my guard, let you inside. I'm an open book when I open that door. Till I'm sure you want more Won't you shed a little light Won't you shed a little light in the dark I trust you but I don't know why Something about that look in your eyes oh, The way you reach out to me With an open hand with steady feet, no preconceived notions, distractions or assumptions, won't you shed a little light? Cause everyone's got a shadow and a light, good and the bad, side by side. What is it that fills you? Is it that fills you the shadows or the light? You can look at me from this side only in the night time when the lines have faded and the definitions blurred. Well, I tried to hide the scars, tried to leave them behind. You can shed a little light. Cause everyone's got a shadow and a light. Good and the bad, side by side. What is it that fills you? 
What is it that fills you? What is it that fills you? Shadows or light. Some people walk around with one eye open, the other is shut to things they don't want to see. Well, not everything is easy, not everything is light. There's a heavy load we gotta bear in the dark sometimes. Cause everyone's got a shadow and a light. Good and the bad, side by side. What is it that fills you? What is it that fills you? Oh, what is it that fills you? What is it that fills you? Oh, what is it that fills you? The shadows all light. Shadows all Shadows all right. All right, everyone. One last round of applause for Bethel Steele. Wow. That was that was very, very, very nice. Uh, love, love the storytelling. Um, can like close your eyes and really take us to another place when we're listening along. Um, and also, I have to mention, my mom watches this program, and she has major props, one for Jocelyn. She says she loves you, and she loves the organization. Uh, and she told me that your music reminds her of her childhood ranch and that she really enjoyed the music. So oh, you've, got, you you've got my mom's stamp of approval. So <laughs> congratulations like, to you both. I love tweeting with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she, loves, she loves to keep along, and she, she has great, great commentary. Uh, so that was Shadows and Light, and that is the name of your newest EP. So where can people find that? Uh, you can find it on my website. Um, I'm also on Spotify and the various streaming services. You can find it on iTunes as well. Uh, every record that I've made is out there in the world. Um, and really, if you want to get my music, uh, I would love to see you someday. And uh, I'm, you know, you could get a hug from me and maybe some music too. Hugs and music. That yeah. sounds like a double whammy to me. I yeah. love it. Well, thank you so much, Bethel. Yeah. Bethel coming to us from Fort Collins, Colorado, part of our partnership with the Bohemian Foundation. Thank you very much. One last round of applause. All right. All right. And so you've heard music from Bethel Steele. You've heard about the great work of Jocelyn and Phenomenal Women. We now have our second and final musical performance of the night. This is another band from up north in the northern Colorado region. This band is called FY5. They proudly swim in deep currents of American music, playing new songs, well informed of country and bluegrass traditions, but not bound by them. No, they're not. So let's bring FY5 up to the stage. Come on up. Denver, baby, Denver Open Media. Turn that beat up! Denver now has a radio station 100% dedicated to local music, local podcasts, and other local content creators. In partnership with Denhack and Kuvo, the Open Media Foundation launched this truly unique new radio station built for and by Denver's creative community. We've got such a robust, diverse, vibrant music scene right here in Denver, Colorado, and it's time to have a new platform. So tune in to Denver Open Media 92.9 FM and 89.3 HD3, and visit denveropenmedia.org to submit content, become a DJ, and help build a new community radio station that celebrates the best Denver has to offer. There are no gatekeepers, podcasts, radio theater, radio drama. You can make whatever you want and it will go on the radio. Listeners are going to be able to hear all the music, all the shows, and vote on the ones they like 
and those votes will determine who gets the most repeat airings and the best primetime slots. Vote for me! I can't wait to hear stuff that I never would have heard even from going out to venues. Fans of the local arts and music community, like me here in Denver, know that Denver is ready for its own radio station. As a stand-up, I'm always performing, contributing, trying to write new things, and I want more and more people to hear what I've got to say. I wink across the bar, I get a medic sent over to Running me. an FM radio station can be a costly endeavor. With our friends at Den Hack, we're coming up with the most innovative, lean, and automated model anyone could imagine for an FM radio station. So please support what these folks are doing, because if we don't champion ourselves, no one's going to do it for us. Let's go, Denver. It's time to get up. As I said before, well informed by bluegrass and country traditions, but not bound by them, this is FY5. Thank you guys very much. It's great to be here tonight with you guys, broadcasting live to the world from Denver, Colorado. We're excited to be here. Thanks so much for having us. Uh, we're, we're from Fort Collins, and uh, 
we come down every once in a while, but it's always great to have another reason to come to Denver. And uh, we've got a couple of songs we're going to play for you tonight. That's, that's a song off our most recent album. We're going to do a song now off our very first album that we put out uh, almost 10 years ago. We've been a band for 10 years uh, with, with uh, mostly this same lineup the whole time. And uh, uh, this is a song I, I wrote uh, about a guy I met when I first moved away to college. And I grew up in the middle of Iowa, a little town, Marshalltown, Iowa. And I moved away to the edge of the state to Dubuque, Iowa, on the Mississippi River. And I went to college there. And uh, the cool thing was is I had, a, I, had a, I had a car. And that helped me leave campus. And I found, I was already a musician. I had played guitar all the time growing up. And, but when I had I had my little car, it was a Ford Escort, and I drove down to Jimmy B's Tap, which was uh, down near the meatpacking plant in Dubuque. And uh, on Sunday night, they had a blues jam down there. And uh, the first time I went down there, they they didn't let me in because I wasn't old enough. But the next time I went down there, <laughs> I brought a guitar with me, and they said, Oh, are you sitting in with the band tonight? I said, yes, I am. And uh, so I, I, uh, I, met, I met a guy named Denny Garcia, and he was the lead guitar player in the Mississippi band, and they played there every Sunday night. And, and Denny, uh, Denny's a, uh, probably the kind of guy my mom hoped I wasn't going to meet right away when I moved away to college. And, uh, and he, he was a full-time musician, and uh, correspondingly, he lived in an old school bus that was parked near the Mississippi River. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Dubuque, Iowa, but it's, it's not always very temperate. And, and so Denny is, but he, he taught me a lot of great songs, and he's just one of these guys that never really lets anything get him down. And he would always manage to find true love uh, like in October, and uh, he'd move in with that girlfriend, and he'd make it through the winter, and then uh, by April, uh, <laughs> things just wouldn't be working out. <laughs> but uh, he taught me a lot of songs in that little school bus, and he learned, and he he played songs, uh, Merle Haggard songs, and uh, uh, Libba Cotton song. He taught me a Libba Cotton song. Taught me how to play a Libba Cotton song. All the old uh, Beatles and Stone songs. He was a great mentor to me. I wrote this song about him. This is called Driftwood. In my time, well, I've 
swam with some big fish. Some of them tried to take me for a fool. And that's how I got all these little scars and dents and cracks and grooves that make me cool. Well, I'm just an old piece of driftwood. I'm floating down. I might just stop around your town. It might just stop around our town. I could dip up around these big barges in between. Well, I might make it down to a lake. Well, I hope I make it down to a As I mentioned, we've been able to uh, travel around uh, and play music all around uh, all around the country, really, for the last uh, 10 years. But we sure have played a lot in Colorado. And one of the places that we we get to go to pretty regularly is over to the southwestern corner, from Durango and Pagosa. We're going to be down there again this spring. Uh, we teach a bluegrass camp down there in Pagosa every spring. But, but over there in Durango, there's a such a really rich history, and we always play uh, at the Henry Strader Theater, which is in the Strader Hotel. And uh, it's a really old hotel in downtown Durango, and, and it's actually been owned by the same family for the, the last three or four generations. And uh, um, he's a fan of our band, the guy that owns it now. And, and he also likes to write songs, and so he was asking me to help him write songs. <laughs> which I did, but I, I asked him a lot of stories of, uh, about the hotel. And so he, he eventually told me about this guy that has worked at the hotel for almost all three of the owners. And he just recently passed away, and uh, his name is Charlie Schumacher, and that's the name of this next song we're going to do. And Charlie was a maintenance man in that hotel for all three of the owners, and, and uh, it had... It had the hotel had gone through a lot of different renovations through all the years, and uh, and there were kind of secrets to that building. And Charlie's the only guy that knew a lot of the secrets to that building. And even as uh, my friend Rod, who owns the building, was telling me about Charlie, he was not quite sure how he was going to get Charlie to tell him everything before he before he kicked a bucket because he was getting older and older and he also smoked like a fiend like and most people don't live very long when they smoke that much and Charlie so they they knew that his time was short and uh, and the other thing that he told me about Charlie is that 
who's really difficult to work with. And so <laughs> even if you could, you know, get somebody to try to apprentice with him, usually he was kind of cantankerous. And anyway, I, I grew up with uh, guys like that that smoked and drank and were angry a lot. And uh, so it fit a certain... Uh, you know, groove that I grew up with. And so I, I wrote this song about Charlie. And yeah, well, the, the kicker for the story about Charlie, and I put it in the song, is that there was a time when Charlie um, had a brief affair with um, my friend Rod's sister. And so that was interesting because Rod's sister would have been the owner's daughter. And Charlie just worked at the, as a maintenance man for all those years. So in this next song, there is a brief time travel back to that moment and uh, you'll have to wait for it it's in the middle though so here's uh, Charlie Schumacher Charlie Schumacher, you won't share secrets. Write them down in a little book. Won't say where he keeps it. Some people say that Charlie once loved the owner's daughter. Under a lock in a tiny box is a ringy border. Thank you. That's Mike Fenders, ladies and gentlemen, on the songwriting and the guitar playing. We're 
going to do another song off of the our latest album. And uh, I think we're due for another new one. So we're kind of stewing on some new songs. But this one's kind of a fun little swinging ditty. We like country music. It's a little nod to that old style of country swing. This one's a little quirky, too. I like to think it uh, puts a little bit of the future tense in there. That's what folk music does, is tells you stories about the now. Because it even mentions the existence of uh, cell phones, voicemail. This one's called Even If You Never Call Me Back. <laughs> Never call me back. Thanks again for having us. We're going to do just one more song and then uh, send you guys into your weekend. But uh, we're real honored to get to, like I said, to come down and play songs for you guys. And uh, you can look at us up online. We're FY5. I think it's FY5band.com. And we're on Facebook and all that stuff. Uh, we're, we're going to do uh, one uh, song off our newest album. Uh, and this is a story song about a lonely traveling salesman goes through a little town uh it's it's in idaho and we've driven by it so many times and uh I, we've never been there uh but i wrote a song like uh, like i have <laughs> a boy can dream um anyway so this song is called court and lane goes like this My speed, and she returned my smile. We talked a while. She put her number in my phone. I know it was there was a silent prayer as I went moving on. There were lots of roads to get me to and fro, so 
I'd go to Corn Lane. I couldn't quite let her know it was for her I'd go. And each time it was harder to read. I reminisce the day we almost kissed. He was the closest we ever came. And I was betting soon the next time I came through. Wow. Well, good golly. Miss Molly, I think I'm ready for the hoedown. You got toe tapping and knee slapping. We got folks out here enjoying it. Yeah. Let's give it up for FY5, folks. Come on. Come on. Love the energy. Love it. Love it. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so we have just like one moment to chat. And so I just have had this question burning in the back of my head since earlier this afternoon. What does FY5 mean? It's not really that uh, uh, exciting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> folk friends united. <laughs> no, uh, not great spellers. No, uh, not great spellers. No, uh, my last name starts with uh, F, so I'm Mike Fenders, and these two guys are married, and their last name's Youngberg. So that's uh, it's not a very good story. So we don't normally tell it. <laughs> <laughs> and there are five of us. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, you, You're welcome. You help you uh, thank you so much. All right, one last round of applause for FY5. <laughs> all right, all right. We've had one heck of a show here tonight at Open Music Sessions. We had the comedy of Laura Condi. I see you still back there, Laura. Give it up for Laura. 
had our spotlight interview with Phenomenal Women Incorporated and Jocelyn Green. Let's give it up for them. All right. Woo, 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 woo. And we had the music of Bethel Steele. Let's give it up for Bethel. Woo, woo, woo. And of course, FY5. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone who's here in the audience tonight. Uh, we have a great bunch of sponsors to thank. One moment. Thank you so much to our sponsors tonight. We have Lamar's Donuts, Renegade, Sexy Pizza, the Bohemian Foundation, which brought us two great bands from Fort Collins tonight. Uh, also, Crazy Mountain Brewery, Intrepid, Ratio, and Denver Arts and Venues. Once again, this has been Open Music Sessions here at Denver Open Media every first Friday. Thank you to those who are tuning in on the radio. Thank you to those who are watching online, Facebook Live. Uh, we'll be back again next month, first Friday in April. Everyone go out there and enjoy great weather. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs>